In this video, I will explain six different methods to draw an ellipse manually. I will split those six methods into two groups. The first group contains two approximate methods, while the second group contains four exact methods. The main concept of the approximate methods is finding four points to be used as the center of the compass to draw four arcs which form the ellipse. While in the exact methods, the concept is finding points along the circumference of the ellipse. Then, connecting those points manually by hand to form the ellipse. I will explain each of those methods in details in the video. I will also make a comparison to see how accurate is the approximate methods. If you want to learn a specific method from the video, you can use the timestamp in the description to jump directly to the method you want. Now let's start with the first group of the approximate methods. In this video, I will explain how to draw an approximate ellipse using the four center method. This method uses four points as the center of the compass to draw four arcs that forms the ellipse. Let's see how this is done. But before that, there is one more thing that I want to explain, which is how to draw a perpendicular bisector to a given line using compass. Open the compass with a radius that is greater than half the length of line AB. Any radius is fine as long as it is greater than half the length of the given line. Now using point A and B as the centers and without changing the radius. Draw two arcs like this. Make sure that the two arcs intersect each other. Now do the same in the opposite side of the line. Finally, when connecting those two points, we got a perpendicular bisector to line AB. Now let's draw an ellipse with a major axis AB equal 10 centimeters and a minor axis CD equal five centimeters. So the ratio between those two axes is one over two. The first step is to draw the major axis of length 10 centimeters. Then in the middle of the major axis, draw the minor axis of length five centimeters, perpendicular to the major axis. You can use the T-square and triangle to draw both axes. Now extend line CD on both sides. Now draw a perpendicular bisector to line AE using the method I just explained. Extend this line until it intersects with the extension of line CD. This point is one of the four centers required to draw the ellipse. We want to mirror it to the right side of the ellipse. I will use the compass to do so. And this point is also one of the four centers. We want to mirror it to the top side of the ellipse. Now we have the four centers required to draw the ellipse. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that this ellipse is approximate. That means it is not 100% perfect ellipse. But how accurate is this method? Let's make a comparison. Any ellipse has a major axis and a minor axis. The ratio between those two axes determine the shape of the ellipse. In this ellipse, for example, the ratio between the minor axis to the major axis is one over two. This means that the length of the minor axis is half the length of the major axis. This ellipse is a perfect ellipse, while this one is an approximate ellipse that was drawn using the four center method. When comparing them together, you can see that there is slightly difference in the curves of the approximate ellipse. I will refer to this difference as an error. This error decrease when the minor axis becomes bigger, or to be more accurate, when the ratio between the minor axis to the major axis increases. 
Here, for example, the ratio is 3 over 4, and you can see that the error is much smaller than before. Now, on the other hand, when this ratio decreases, for example, when the ratio is 1 over 3, the error becomes much bigger and visible when comparing it to a perfect ellipse. So basically, you can use this method if the ratio is bigger than 1 over 3, and you will get acceptable results. In this video we will learn how to draw an approximate ellipse with a major axis AB and minor axis CD. Also AB minus CD equals X. We will use this X value in the drawing process. Let's get started. Using the concentric circle method, draw an ellipse of major axis AB and minor axis CD. Now by connecting those points with smooth curve, we will get the required ellipse. You can connect them either manually by hand or using a flexible curve or a French curve. You can get more accurate results by increasing the number of diameters. Let's try it out.
Now we have more points to draw the ellipse, which will give us more accurate result. Using the rectangle method, draw an ellipse with a major axis AB, and minor axis CD. First draw a rectangle surrounding the ellipse axis. Now divide this line, into any number of equal parts. Let's say 5 parts. After that, divide this line into 5 parts as well. Now by connecting those points with smooth curve, we get the first quarter of the ellipse. You can connect them either manually by hand, or using a flexible curve or a French curve. I will repeat the steps faster for the second quarter of the ellipse. Using the arc of circle method, draw an ellipse with a major axis AB and a minor axis CD. First, we need to locate the two focal points of the ellipse. Now divide this line into any number of equal parts. Let's say 5. Now by connecting those points with smooth curve, we get the first quarter of the ellipse. You can connect them either manually by hand or using a flexible curve or a French curve.
notes that the distance between those points doesn't necessarily have to be equal. For example, if we move this point, it will only change the resulting point position, but it will remain on the ellipse circumference. In this video, I will explain how to draw an ellipse using the trammel method. This method uses a piece of paper as the trammel to locate points along the circumference of the ellipse. Then, by connecting those points, we got the required ellipse. Let's see how this is done. We will draw an ellipse with a major axis AB equal 14 cm and a minor axis CD equal 8 cm. First, let's draw the major axis of length 14 cm. Then in the middle of the major axis, draw the minor axis of length 8 cm, perpendicular to the major axis. Now we need a piece of paper like this to use it as the trammel. The length of the paper must be greater than half the length of line AB. Now align the edge of the paper to the major axis. Then at point A, add a mark on the paper. We will name this mark P for point. Now without moving the paper, add another mark at the minor axis position. Name this mark minor. Now align the edge of the paper to the minor axis and make sure that point P is at the top of the minor axis. Then add a mark at the major axis position. Name this mark major. Now the trammel is finished. Let's start using it. Using the trammel is very simple. All you have to do is to align the point minor to the minor axis and the point major to the major axis. Then add a point at the mark P. Repeat those steps to get more points. Move the trammel again. Align both marks to the axes. Add a point at mark P. After you have enough points, you can start connecting them manually by hand. You can increase the points to get more accurate results if you like. Also, you can use a French curve or a flexible curve to connect the points.